guys, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Got a really fun one today. We're learning how to do Sleep Now in the Fire. That's how you say it, right? Sleep Now in the Fire by Rage Against the Machine. Um, so this one's got a really fun riff in it that's pretty easy to recreate and, and play. Um, and then it's got some interesting sections where we a lot of kind of guitar harmonizers and, and then the solo is a bunch of feedback and toggle or kill switches and all sorts of stuff. So we're going to talk about all this and for some of those sections I'm going to show you, um, especially the verse, kind of the way to make it sound like the album without having uh, a whammy pedal. So anyway, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already and ring that notification bell so you know when I see a new video. And if you like the lessons I put up here on YouTube, the best way to support me is to um, you know, join my guitar academy. That's really the best way to do it. Um, you'll see a link to that in the description below. Uh, that link will also give you a free seven day trial too, so you can check it out. So now my guitar academy contains all my courses, uh, all my guitar courses covering everything from a couple of uh, beginner courses all the way through more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone, uh, you name it. There's a lot of stuff there. And you get personalized support from me too. So uh, I hope to see you over there. All right, so let's jump into this track. I'm in standard tuning here. And we have this main riff, which we can, that he pretty much repeats the same way almost every time. It looks like this. All right, so we're gonna start here with the open A string. It's gonna be underneath some, be basically hitting a couple strings. We're going to start with the seventh fret on the D along with that open A. Down to the fifth fret on the uh, D. And then back to that seventh fret on the D. So you can be playing those. Gonna, so basically, just the notes on the D string first. It's just that seven a couple times, then down to five, and then back to seven. Now, while you're doing that, you're hitting the open A string with it. All right, then we're going to go over here. And we're going to basically play the fifth fret there on the G. And when you play that note, slightly pull it towards the floor. So you slightly pull it sharp. And then you go back to the open A string with the seventh fret there on um, the D, the octave. Sure now, you will see uh, every once in a while in the song and live, especially a little bit more, when he grabs that, that fifth fret there on the G, he'll also grab the fifth fret on the E sometimes. So, kind of. So that is heard not every time, it's just kind of random, so uh, sometimes you'll just kind of dig in a little bit more and, and that bar will kind of go across to the B string as well. So that's kind of, we're going to repeat that section. So after we get here, we kind of start out, kind of, kind of a little pickup going back into it. And it just um, just hits that keeps hitting the um, seventh fret there on the D with the open A with it three times. Now you will see I, I've seen you know you know doing my little research to see how you know people are doing it or whatever. You'll see a lot of people go from the fifth fret and come back to the seventh like that. But he, he doesn't go back to the fifth fret there. He just goes. That little burst is all done on this A. So we have this. And then you kind of keep going with it. Just keep going with the riff. So it's basically the first time you hear it is just straight. Okay, and then you hear it with that little three note, uh, three strong burst at the beginning of it, and the rest of it's the same from there. And then again. 
So all together we have this. Now the the third time through that little ending, it does do that. It goes seven five at the very end there, kind of transitions into another section. So we have this. Right here, go seven five there on the D. And you still have the open A with it, and then we're gonna go over here. And grab some double stops at the seventh fret across the uh, G and the B. So you just kind of basically grabbing the seventh fret on the G and the B and just pulling them up, or you can pull them down. Now he's pushing it up, so it kind of sounds a little bit different. So push it up a couple times, and then. You're gonna play those double stops across the fifth fret on the G and the B, back to seven on the G and the B, and then back to the five. So this. And then you're gonna end um, this whole riff by going, you're gonna pull off seven to five on the D string, and then, and then hit seven again. You can do it all legato if you want. So that's really, when you do that, that's really the end of the riff. So we have this so far. And then you just kind of repeat all that. Then we get to the verse sections. Now this is where things get a little bit tricky and they can drive me insane trying to figure out what I'm actually hearing and then what I'm seeing and they're two separate things. So um, let me explain. So on the recording, he's uh, you're hearing something that I don't really see him doing live. Tom Morello has actually done a lesson on this song on YouTube. Um, it's a little quick little clips. He's mostly showing the main riff. And he does a, a great job of breaking that down. Uh, then he gets to the verse and then like the video kind of cuts <laughs> and there's just like the very like, like last five seconds of him explaining what he's doing there. I guess they skipped all the actual pedal settings that he's using because that's the big part of the, the, the verse. But anyway, what he's doing there and also what I see him doing live is not what you're hearing on the recording. So that's what kind of drives me insane. So what are you actually hearing on the recording? Now, wait, what is he doing in that lesson? Because you probably saw that and you're referencing that. So what is happening in the lesson is he has a, a Digitech whammy pedal, all right? Very popular um, pedal from back in the early 90s all the way to today. Now, he has a harmony setting on that where you can't make you need that. Um, I'm going to show you a way to kind of do the album version without a pedal but in a second. But anyway, so what he's doing in that video, and you see him do a lot live, uh, most of the time when you see live videos, which there's plenty of those on YouTube as well, he has that whammy pedal set to where it harmonizes the note that he's playing down a minor third. So he'll play this C here at the 15th fret on the A string. <laughs> And what the harmonizer does is it adds this A underneath it. So minor third down. So that's what you're seeing in that lesson video. And then he goes up and plays that note, the octave of that C, and also the harmonizer will then add the minor third down, the A there. So we have this. Kind of 
kind of that it's just those notes and the harmonizer is creating that lower note so that is what you're seeing on with his lesson video and a majority of the time when you see him play live i've also seen him have a setting on the whammy pedal and a, a couple of the live things that i saw where he didn't have the harmony set he played the same c octave here but he had the harmony set to be a major third up so it was adding an e so it sounded like this so um i don't know why but he's he basically you'll see i've seen a video on youtube but you can track it down and go through live things that he's actually harmonizing it and you can tell he's playing this note and the harmony is being the pedal is harmonizing it up a major third which is a different setting that you can do on the digitech whammy so it's just adding that e on top and when and the e of the octave on. so that's how you're going to see him kind of do it on the live in a record uh, but on the recording we don't have those notes on the recording the notes you're hearing are uh, are uh, a major second apart so how he's getting these notes um i have an idea um but so what you're actually hearing on the recording is a g with an a on top of it and then you hear the octave of that as well so playing it over time maybe he said you know what i'd rather do this instead live i think it sounds better and maybe he's just it's what he's done it with for the past two decades but um we basically you can it's kind of hard to play it like this i think what is going on on the recording is he's playing just the g's and he's having the the harmonizer the pedal is harmonizing it up a major second And that's how you get that kind of more dissonant quality that's on the recording and it's a little bit more subdued than the ones you're hearing it you see them in that lesson video and stuff so just listen to the the notes you'll hear these two a g and an a a g below an a and then when he goes to the high note there in the verse it's the same thing an octave higher all right so i'm thinking that is done with a Digitech whammy pedal harmonizing this G up a major second for that and the octave. Now, most of you guys don't have a Digitech whammy pedal to do this. So how to make it sound like the recording without a pedal? You kind of cheat it. So anyway, we can still get the same notes out. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to play because we're having to actually play the notes. Now, you could do this. Which is a little bit cumbersome. Or I kind of came up with a way like this, where you play the A on the the uh, 12th fret of the A string, along with the open G. Now that open G can be a little bit bright. It sounds better to be this G here, so, but it just makes it easier to play. And then the high part would just be the octave of that, which is the G at the 12th fret there on the G string, and then this A here at the 10th fret on the B. Once again, you can't play it like this. 15th on the low E, 12 on the A. And then jump to the, to the octave of that, which is the 17th fret on the D, and then the 14th fret on the, the G. This one sounds better. It's just a lot harder to play. All right, so anyone uh, that you, you would like to play. Now, let's get to the solo. Solo is one of those things that nobody even Tom Morello it's it's kind of it's based off of feedback so you can't really predict where you're going he even said when I get to the solo I just hope but it's a good feedback note to work with but I can tell you what he's doing so if you want to do the same thing there obviously I don't have um, a kill switch on my guitar or a toggle switch on my guitar that'll make the, the cut the volume out but what he's doing is he's getting in front of the amp and he's letting it feedback the guitar so when you get that feedback going that's the pitch that you're hearing and then what he's doing is he's grabbing his whammy bar with his left hand and deviating the pitch a little bit. So he's just using it to kind of change the pitch of the feedback. 
And while he's doing that, as he does a lot, he calls it a toggle switch. I guess maybe it's a to pickup toggle or whatever, but he's got one pickup off or whatever. But it's basically a kill switch is what he has. Um, so that's, maybe he's just calling it a toggle switch, but it's a kill switch. So when he flicks it, it um, cuts the signal of the guitar off. And he goes back and the guitar is back live again. So he's when he's doing that and creating those little rhythms, that is the kill switch. He's killing the signal. Obviously not easy to recreate if you don't have a kill switch on your guitar or some type of a kill switch. Some people can kind of use a tremolo pedal effect, but those sometimes you can have them so they have like random tremolo effects and stuff. You don't want like a consistent rhythm. He's kind of creating like little different rhythms while he's doing it. So that's what's going on. It's those three things you need. Lots of feedback. Um, then grab the whammy bar with your 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 fret hand and change the pitch of the, the feedback by doing that. And then for the rest of the stuff, the, the actual rhythmic value of the solo is done by just hitting that kill switch. Obviously, I have none of this gear. I don't even have an amp here to do this. Uh, so it, it is one of those things where you're going to have to kind of experiment on your own. But I can't let you know what exactly is going on there. All right, so that's about it. Really, it's just that main riff that we get to rock out on, just like he does. And then we have the, um, you know, the the verse and all that good stuff that you can make sound like the recording. It's just like if you don't have the pedal, you're not gonna actually play it like he literally is. And then how he plays it these days is not like he did in the recording anyway. So anyway. A lot of information there, I know, but it's, it's always this way with Tom Morello. He, he does some crazy stuff with his effects, and it's kind of really difficult to kind of put it together into like a lesson format. All right, so, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.